Mr. Speaker, 11 years ago, Kevin Zyober joined the United States Navy Reserve. In his own words, he did so to help protect America's liberties, freedoms, and security. From 2010 to 2012, Kevin worked diligently for a federal contractor in my home state of California, helping to grow the company from 18 employees to more than 90. When he found out that he would be deployed in November of 2012, his employer decorated the office with navy color balloons and threw a surprise party in his honor. Unfortunately, the real surprise was delivered to him 30 minutes after his party. Kevin was fired. His employer made it clear that his job would not be waiting for him when he got back from his deployment. I wonder what my colleagues would do if forced with the same circumstance of choosing country over providing for their own families. The Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act protects his rights as a reservist to deploy and keep his job. When Kevin returned from serving his country in 2014 and tried to enforce this very right, his employer filed a motion to compel arbitration and it was granted. Six months into his tenure with the company, Kevin had been required to sign several documents as a condition of keeping his job. Those documents included a force arbitration clause, which meant that Kevin would have no access to the federal court system, no access. He would lose his right to a jury trial, to any meaningful appeal, and to a public or speedy proceeding of any kind. Mr. Speaker, Kevin, and the thousands of other Americans who have been forced into arbitration proceedings are why we are here today. We are here to ensure that Americans are not forced to unknowingly agree to surrender their constitutional right. Under the present system, when corporations harm workers and consumers, their cases are often funneled into the confidential quasi-legal arbitration system. When thousands of Californians were charged early termination fees that were illegal <clears throat> under state law, DirecTV responded by forcing individual customers into arbitration. What exactly are consumers supposed to do when it costs more to pursue a case through arbitration than than it would if they were looking to recover a small amount. Instead of victims fighting their cases together, big corporations can get away with making millions illegally by harming average Americans. By allowing forced arbitration and preventing class action lawsuits, we incentivize this very bad behavior Mandatory arbitration has the potential to affect everyone. One story that haunts me is that of Sister Irene Morissette. When she was 84 years old, Sister Irene, an elderly Catholic nun, moved to Chateau Vestavia an assisted living facility outside of Birmingham, Alabama. And while living at this facility, she was brutally raped at 84 years of age. The police found blood, semen on her bed and her clothing. The medical examiner documented bleeding and injuries that indicated a rape had occurred. But after the police failed to bring a criminal case, Irene's family attempted to bring a civil suit against Chateau Vestavia. 
And instead of being able to pursue her case in court, she was forced to arbitration. Irene unknowingly had signed a forced arbitration clause buried in the documents required to live at the facility. The arbitrator decided that despite the physical evidence of rape, besides the blood and the semen on her clothing, the facility that was charged with keeping her safe could not and would not be held responsible. Unfortunately, forced arbitration is common practice among large chain nursing facilities. 90% of these large facilities require forced arbitration agreement. Mr. Speaker, can you imagine trusting your loved one, your mom, or a grandma to the care for at one of these facilities and then finding out that they had been brutally harmed and that you could not seek a fair recourse. No justice. These facilities argue that if you refuse to sign a forced arbitration clause, you can just take your loved one, take your business somewhere else. Go. But that choice is not a viable choice because the majority of these large facilities, as I, as I stated, 90% of these large facilities require you to sign an arbitration agreement. Many people don't have another option, at least not one if they want to live close to their loved ones or in their home state. So seniors must sign away their right to be denied the opportunity to seek justice, just like Sister Irene. What struck me the most about her story is why the arbitrator did not rule in her favor. The arbitrator said, that Sister Irene did not sound upset enough in the audio recording to determine if she was really raped. What does that mean? How many times have men been judge and jury when deciding women didn't seem hurt enough? Didn't fight back enough? didn't wear the right clothing, didn't scream loud enough, didn't wear her own condom. Sister Irene was 84 years old. For God's sake, what does it take to find responsibility in an act of violence against an innocent nun? And I wonder how many other victims who have been forced into arbitration have heard the similar statements of doubt from private arbitrators. And the worst part is that we will never know. And why is that? Because most arbitration proceedings are not public. Non-disclosure agreements and gag orders often accompany mandatory arbitration. The Me Too movement taught us a valuable lesson about non-disclosure agreements and forced arbitration. And without forced arbitration, we could have stopped Bill O'Reilly, Roger Ailes, from assaulting women and spewing their hate on Fox News long ago. Doing away with forced arbitration means more victims can share their stories and prevent abusers from harming others. 
What I hope these stories make clear is that arbitration, contrary to claims of my colleagues, does not work for everyone. In fact, for most Americans, it serves as a barrier to justice and a legal shield for corporations. It is a system that deters defendants from seeking justice in small payouts. It is a system that is fundamentally based on tricking Americans into giving up their rights. That is why H.R. 1423 is so critically important. This bill would restore the rights of Americans by allowing them to make the choice for themselves about whether arbitration is right for them. Ultimately, that is what this bill is about. Freedom to choose for every American. If arbitration is the amazing system that my colleagues claim it is, then Americans will flock to pursue their claims through it. But if arbitration is in fact the barrier to justice that it appears to be for so many Americans, then this bill will allow them to choose for themselves how they want to pursue that justice. Voting for this rule is a step towards fighting the special interests that oppress our constituents.